It is always great to talk to super authors, and here he is, Douglas Richards, a New York Times and USA Today best-selling author. He weaves suspense, action, and science, which is so interesting, all in one thing. Douglas, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Bill. Well, your books, I've just discovered you, and I'm so excited about the books. I started with the book Wired, and then went to Amped, and then went to The Cure. And, of course, you have a new book out just this, this month called Unidentified. But first of all, if someone has not heard about you, let's tell people what you're doing and, and about your books in general. Yeah, so I, uh, you know, I write what, what I call near-future thrillers, so kind of like what Michael Crichton did a lot of times. I'm compared to him often, where it's you know, 10, 20, 30 years in the future, usually set on, I mean, always set on Earth, but it kind of extrapolates technologies, and uh, you know, they're thrillers, so you know, there's lots of action and adventure, but also you know, I'm kind of known for uh, weaving in a ton of accurate science and, and you know, having plenty of food for thought in most of my books, especially like the last... 15 of them, I have author notes at the back where I go through kind of what's real and what's not, you know, with respect to the science. And uh, I have references and all that sort of people. And people really kind of love that as much as they love the thriller that, you know, they, they can be entertained, but then afterwards they get to kind of learn some really cool, you know, mind blowing stuff as well. Exactly. And in, in fact, in the books Wired and Amped, it was interesting to hear all the things that you wrote about the human brain and and even the capabilities some of which are real and I'm going to guess some are uh, exaggerated but yes that was that's always fascinating to get a good story and then learn at the same time and you are you have a degree in microbiology so I'm sure that helps plus I suppose as you do each book you're also doing extra research to have the great those great uh, facts along the way Oh, I do a ton of research. No, no. So I have a master's degree in molecular biology. I was in a PhD program, but I, you know, was kind of sloppy and and uh, you know, I just didn't love the bench work. I love the you know the literature, but uh, so I I left that. So like I say, a master's in molecular biology, and I do a ton of research. In fact, I uh, you know I often say I use every good idea I've ever had for each novel. And then when I'm finished, it's like holy hell, what do I do now? <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've exhausted every good idea I've ever had, so now I've got to kind of reload. And so what I do is I read, you know books on ethics and philosophy and, and, you know, cosmology and nanotechnology and whatever it is to keep on, you know, getting new, new ideas in my head for novels and, and also kind of understanding science more broadly. Well, just for a second, as far as the book Wired, that's the first one I found out about you. Where is that in the order of books as far as all the books you've written? Yeah, that's number one. So that's really kind of the one that made my career. That's the first um, book that you wrote? Yeah, wow. yeah. So it was the first adult thrill. I wrote some some you know middle school stuff, and then I tried that one, and it just went viral. And you know, it was five weeks, like you said, on the New York Times and USA Today bestseller list, which was, um, and that kind of made my career. So I was a biotechnology executive for many years. You know, when that one kind of went viral and you know hit the New York Times list, you know, I left biotech to do this full time. And then, of course, there's number two book right after that sort of the sequel amped that was right. also very exciting and the character in the in those two books kira miller i, I mean as i listened and then she teams up with this uh, david desh I, I mean just the relationship that they had and the adventures and the perils that they they went through i, I found that very exciting i think and, and so many other people have and and those that haven't that's a good place to start wired and amped i, I would suggest yeah, thank you. No, I really appreciate that. You know, so I have this latest one out called Unidentified, where I tried something different. So, you know, I've got like, I think this is my 18th adult novel. The first 17 were all in third person. And uh, I decided to, to try first person. And I wasn't sure how it was going to be received. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes if you don't do it right. And uh, this one was uh, was about UFOs, because I've kind of become a little obsessed about them for the longest time. I was super skeptical. You know, I thought, you know, the UFO signs might be like mass delusions, you know, kind of like vampires and, and werewolves. You know, I just, I, I believe that, that alien life exists, but I, you know, light speed is really slow and, and cosmic different, uh, you know, uh, distances are huge. And so, you know, I just didn't really think anybody was visiting us. But what's, what's remarkable is the last few years, I don't know if you've been paying attention to, you know, 60 Minutes episodes and, the, and Congress right. giving, re, getting official reports and, and their patents being published that I, that I mentioned in this novel. 
uh, that will just blow your mind, that the, the Navy's filing for patents and getting patents on, on basically – craft that do what the UFOs do. I mean, they, they, can, they don't have any wings. They don't have any propellers. They can hover. They can move at 46,000 miles an hour. They can fly underwater near Earth orbit. I mean, and, and these are, you know, Navy. The Navy is admitting seeing these things on a daily basis. And, and now it's not just, you know, an artifact because they're seeing it on radar and, and, and infrared, and they're, they're seeing it on multiple ways. And so it's just kind of, wow. I mean, this, this stuff is real. So what I thought I'd do is, write a novel where I kind of review some of the, the, the current uh, information that really shows that there's really something going on out there, and then ha- have a fictional take on what's happening, you know, try to kind of uh, address, you know, why they haven't landed on the White House lawn, you know, why, why they're showing themselves to us, but they're not really formally showing themselves to us. And, uh, you know, try to address these questions in, in a, you know, fast-paced thriller, and, and I, I'm really happy with how it turned out, and the reception so far has been really fantastic. So beyond my wildest dreams, especially, you know, the first time I tried first person. So couldn't be happier with it. We're talking with Douglas E. Richards. His new book is Unidentified. And right there, as you started to lay it out there, Douglas, I'm thinking, yeah, this is what I'm hearing about. I'm hearing my friends talk about it, UFOs. We're hearing about their the people in the highest levels of government are talking about it. It's on the news. But one of the things I always wonder is, like you said, well, you know, is it just some some kind of, is it a drone? Is it something that we just can't identify? But the thing that I wonder is, yes, I believe that there's other life forms out there. But as far as the ones that we call UFOs, why don't they reach out? Why don't they say hello? Why don't they engage with us? Or do they and we just never hear from those people again. I don't know, but it's it's totally very exciting to imagine those things and to see that maybe we are at the point in time of our human history that we may be engaging with them soon. I don't know. I, I you know, it's really been fascinating to me. I never thought I'd see the day when the government would basically come out and admit that these sightings are real and they can't explain them, and they're doing stuff that defies the laws of physics, like, on a daily basis. I never thought I'd see that day. And, and yeah, I mean, even, even then I thought, well, okay, you know, they have the technology. If they can visit us and do all these physics-defying things, they can be stealthy. I mean, they, if they wanted to not be seen, they could not be seen. So why are they teasing us like this? I mean, exactly. either land on the White House lawn and announce yourself, or completely hide from us. So why this middle ground? What's really going on? And so, you know, I, I really, uh, I spent a lot of thought on trying to find, a, you know, a really exciting, imaginative thriller uh, based around some, you know, some ideas I had about what might be going on or, you know, just a fictional take on it that, uh, you know, that I thought was exciting and fun and, and had a lot of big ideas. So, so it was kind of a, a fun project for me. And, and uh, like I said, I'm real gl- happy with how it turned out. And well, without telling us too much, I do. I am curious now, uh, in many ways, about this particular book, Unidentified. Do you have, as far as human characters, do you have characters that are part of this adventure? If so, is there one or two? I mean, there's you know a, 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 ch- a principal protagonist and, and well, two of them really, uh, but you know it's extended beyond that. You know, I mean, basically, as a science fiction author, which I which is a little bit uh, autobiographical. But it's a science fiction author who's kind of obsessed like me with finding out what's going on about UFOs. And so he goes about it by, by – uh, and I don't want to give away too many no, spoilers. No, don't tell us too much. <laughs> yeah, the very beginning where he goes about it where he's going to – he, you know, he's going to kind of rattle some cages. He's going to go on a show like this that reaches millions of, uh, millions of audience around the world. Of, uh, and he's going to you know, claim that he knows exactly what's going on. And he's going to, you know, disclose this to the world. And he's hoping that there are people out there who don't want him to disclose it, who don't want the truth to be known. And so he's, gonna, he's purposely trying to attract them. He's baiting them with himself. So, and, and I'll stop there, but, but that's kind of – and he's got this, uh, this woman that he's, uh, that he's with as well. That he's, but anyway, so that, that's, I think that's, that's more than enough. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but the, the other thing, when we think about the phenomenon of – we're talking about here in the United States and all the attention, but – do we hear, and maybe you know this in your research, do we hear about other countries talking about UFO sightings and, and things like that around the world? Yeah, we sure do. No, they've had these projects, uh, you know, 
multiple, multiple countries. Like we've had Project Blue Book and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they've had their own projects, and 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 you know, a lot of our politicians, and I've got I've got quotes in in the novel. They believe that other countries are taken a lot more seriously than than we do. I mean, we're you know we're so worried about appearances, and you know, people think we're nuts by 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 looking into this, and other countries are uh, taking a much more sober approach and really. You know, and they're ahead of us in terms of investigating this phenomenon. Our politicians are starting to realize that Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, you know, really pushed getting this into the public eye, and and uh, you know, so we're we're starting to catch up with other countries. But but yeah, it's so definitely a worldwide phenomenon. Well, I can't wait to read the book. One of the things we like to know about authors, I think it, you have a fascinating profession that you're in. But each author has a different way that they do that you do your craft. Do you have a procedure? Do you write at a certain time every day? Is it morning or how does that work when you sit down and write? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so you know, it takes me months to to figure out what I'm going to write and you know research it and read a bunch of books on it. You know, like my most successful novel ever called Split Second was, you know, was kind of a time travel novel, but I wanted to make a unique twist on time travel that they'd never done before. And that's really hard to do because there's been thousands of books on time travel, hundreds of television shows and movies. You know, can I find anything new? So I kind of read, I read, you know, dozens and dozens of short stories on time travel. I read books on the actual science of time travel, really tried to wrap my mind. It took me months. And I fi- finally figured out um, a hook something that was really unique and it turned out it was the best-selling novel i've ever written um called split second so so there's a lot of preparation a lot of effort before i write the first word getting a sense of of the technology i'll be pursuing and and the implications of all of that stuff Uh, and then you know once i'm in the writing mode i kind of get up at six every morning you know walk down the hall to my home office you know I, i can write you know, six, eight hours, and it's basically noon or two o'clock in the afternoon, and then I'm free to do whatever I want. So, I mean, I'm super lucky. I mean, I won the lottery. You know, you have to be lucky no matter how good you are. There there has to be a certain amount of luck to, to find an audience because, you know, there's a lot of novels out there. So, you know, I, I won the lottery, and, and, you know, I'm just super lucky, and I'll never forget that. And, and you know, so I, I really... You know, I never take my fans for granted. I'm just thrilled to have any fans. And so, you know, if anybody ever writes to me, uh, I always respond every time because, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky. Well, as you know, that's what I did. I, after I forget which book I was on out of the three that I read, but I reached out, I went to your website and said, Hey, let's talk about this because I think you're unique in terms of, yeah, there's a lot of action. There's a lot of suspense and people in perils and in trouble. I love the fact that you weaved science and that I walked away and learned a little bit something, especially about the human brain. I'm excited to go to the split second, maybe as my next one and or your newest one. But other than the newest book, and that is called <laughs> Unidentified. I may want to go there first now I'm thinking about it. But anyway, Unidentified, if you were, if someone were to ask you after they read Unidentified, what would the, the next book in your arsenal would you tell them to go to if, you, if they asked you? Boy, I, I I wish I could tell you. <laughs> you I mean, have so many. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, uh, I have a lot. Of, I mean, at the end of my, you know, so if you go on Amazon and you look at the books, I mean, and it describes, you know, it has a synopsis for each book. At the bottom, it will have a list of all of my novels in, in kind of, you know, the standalones and the series. I have, you know, uh, like three that I've done. I've done uh, two books, and then I've got one trilogy. And, and, you know, what I would just suggest to people is just kind of read the synopsis of each one and see what sounds interesting to you and, and, and go from there. But they're all, you know, they're all fairly, I put a lot of pressure on myself because my fans are really passionate. Um, you know, not everybody likes my stuff, obviously, not, you know, you can't please everybody. But the ones that do like it really seem to like it passionately. And so I don't want to let them down. And so, you know, I'm actually, it's more stressful writing now than before I had sold even a single book because uh, now, I mean, there's so, there, there's a lot of expectations Sure. and my readers really feel like, you know, the ones who read my stuff feel like there's no way I could write a bad book, which isn't true. You know, they're, you know, I, I say, Oh, I hope you like it. Oh my God, how could I not like it? <laughs> and, I, and I'm thinking, boy, this is putting a lot of pressure on me uh, to deliver. You know, I don't want to disappoint anybody. So I work, you know, extra hard to try to keep the quality and, you know, you've seen authors. I, I've I've have authors that I love, that you know, 
they, they start kind of not phoning it in, but, you know, as they get more and more successful and have more and more books, I, th- I think sometimes the quality deteriorates a little bit. And so I've really worked hard to, to try to prevent that. We're talking with Douglas E. Richards. The website is DouglasERichards.com. You can see all the books that we're talking about. And, yeah, I I think that's just fascinating. I'm going to go with Unidentified as my next one. But how many books are you writing a year? Is is there a certain amount you're doing a year, or it's just one ever? Like Immortality Code looks like that was also 2021 as well. So are you at two books a year, or how does that work? No, it's probably probably like every eight or nine months. Okay. Um, you know, but I mean, I'm working, you know, 50 hours a week. I work seven days a week. Um, you know, once I'm writing a novel, I kind of get immersed in it, and I kind of have to write it to, to keep the momentum going. But and, and by the way, any of this that goes to my website, I don't have uh, unidentified on there yet. I've, I've I've been a little remiss, but I've got to put that on there. <laughs> and uh, and also, I apologize ahead of time. It's not a great website. Um, you know, a lot of people are much better at, at marketing than I am and social media and all that stuff. I'm, I'm super weak in that area. Um, but I'm lucky enough that, uh, you know, the word of mouth has been good. So anyway, so, so yeah, the, you know, the, the website is okay, but you know, it's not as glossy and slick as, as most author websites, but, um, anyway, well, uh, certainly p- people could see the new book on Amazon, right? Amazon yeah, website. Exactly as well as are you doing any tours with this uh, book are you going around the united uh, states or you you can't no leave, i'm leave not no 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 i i i'm not i'm kind of uh just a re- recluse at home i i really don't travel much anymore but uh like i said i'm super lucky and you know i get to do what i love doing and you know it's been working out great well you pretty much have the perfect weather there in san diego i love that place it is just very very nice before we close the segment Douglas E. Richards, what else do you want people to know? Um, I really can't think of anything. Just, you know, obviously if, uh, if anybody reads uh, a novel and has anything to say, you know, uh, like I say, I, I encourage people to write emails to me and say hello, and I'll always respond. You know, you can also friend me on Facebook at Douglas, Douglas E. Richards Author is my Facebook uh, handle, and uh, the email address is Douglas E. Richards one at gmail.com if anybody wants to get in touch. But uh, other than that, um, I think that's about it. DouglasERichards.com. One other thing, as far as your new book, Unidentified, you're talking about it now on various shows, but when do you know when the next book is going to come? Do you have an idea yet, or you're tossing around ideas, or are you just taking a break until a certain time? I'm taking a break. I want to see how this one does, if it... If it blows it out, uh, then I'll probably do a sequel. Right now, it's it's looking good. I mean, the, the reception has been really, really strong. I was kind of hoping that it might be because, you know, the zeitgeist right now about UFOs is pretty strong. Very timely. And, yeah, I, I, so I think it's very, you know, you know, a topic that people are really interested in. And I think, uh, you know, the plot twists and all that people are really liking so I, I have high hopes that, uh, that it's going to continue to do well, and uh, I'll be writing a sequel. Sounds great. Douglas, thank you so much for being on the show. DouglasErichards.com. Hey. hey, thanks a lot, Bill. I really appreciate it.